Welcome to another hot and beautiful day here in Malaysia. We've made our way from Malacca to Kuala Lumpur. We are starting at Freedom Square. It's the name of this beautiful lawn surrounded by some gorgeous buildings that we are going to take the time to go stop in front of and tell you about each of them and sort of make our way around this cultural historic part of Kuala Lumpur. And then to contrast this sort of older area, we are going to end the evening at Petronas Towers, which we are so excited to be. It's an iconic building or buildings here in Kuala Lumpur. We hear there's a great light show there. So that is the plan for the day. Plus there's going to be some food along the way. You're not gonna to wanna to miss this. I am shocked, this is amazing. I think we have a great day in store. This exact spot behind me that in August of 1957 the British flag was lowered and the Federation of Malaya's flag was raised for the very first time. There were crowds everywhere in this square and everybody sung the national anthem for the very first time and then cried Merdika, Merdika, independence, independence, right here at this very spot. <laughs> I'm so glad that they have it marked and you can kind of imagine the crowds filling in the square, crowded in, just excited. Uh, it's kind of amazing to be able to be here and be surrounded by this kind of contemporary history. I love it. It's worth noting that even though that is the spot, there is a far more prominent flag now at the far end of the square that stands proudly and it's huge and the flag is sort of billowing in the wind. and. It really is beautiful. Also, there is what appears to be a cricket pitch thing, so I guess they must occasionally play cricket on the square. I know we just got here, but like this is my favorite place in Kuala Lumpur <laughs> so far. <laughs> Can I say that on day one? I don't know. <laughs> We have found ourselves inside of the City Gallery Cafe, where it is very noisy and very busy. <laughs> In order to enter here, you put your name on a list, and after maybe a 30 to 60 minute wait, you're able to enter and try one of their delicious looking desserts. Bill's trying their famous durian cake, and I went with something a little bit safer and got an almond pastry and a beverage. We are super excited to have a break, but we're even more excited to have our first try of something durian flavored, which we've been seeing all over Malaysia so far. So here's Bill. Now I've never actually had anything that was properly durian. I can smell it. The smell of durian is notorious world over. It's durian. It actually doesn't smell that bad in my humble opinion, but give it a try here. <laughs> so, I don't know how to describe that taste to somebody who hasn't had durian before, like me. It's mildly sour and salty. It tastes like something I've had in a like a Chinese restaurant. Kind of like a sweet and sour sauce, but more on the sour side. Just wait until you try it. I don't know that I'm a huge fan. I will eat this, but eh, maybe not for me. How small of a piece can I get away with? Oh my God, the smell. <laughs> Now this cake already has things going against it for me because I don't love cream fillings. <laughs> and I can smell it, but it doesn't smell anything like stinky tofu, which is the worst smelling food I've ever had. So durian crepe cake, here goes. I have a proper something that we'd like on standby. I might just dive into that next. Can I just keep stalling? <laughs> All right, durian crepe cake. Oh my God. <laughs> that did not go well for me. 
<laughs> it was easier to eat than stinky tofu, but it tastes like gym socks. It tastes how it smells. I not love it. Okay, so let's let's end with something maybe a little bit more up our American palate alley. All of the desserts here looked incredible. So uh, let's just clear away the dairy and flavor. Bill's gonna finish that? Wow, impressive, we'll see. Let's try the almond croissant. Gotta clear away the gym socks. Wow, people like that here? Wow. We still have to try regular dairy in here. Almond croissant, oh, all I taste is the, oh my God. Oh, oh my God. I also ordered an almond croissant, not expecting it to be filled with almond paste, but it is, and it's absolutely incredible. It's delicious. I'm glad that Bill already said on camera that he was gonna finish the dairy and cake so I can have the almond one to myself. Well, that was special. Also, I didn't make it through the dairy and cake. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Kuala Lumpur. Since we're already here, we're gonna take a peek around the city gallery. It's free and it's kind of cool in here. So I guess let's see what we can find out about Kuala Lumpur at their city gallery. We have high expectations because Singapore's was pretty amazing. Stairs of the city gallery, which seems to be some fun photo spots. <laughs> so we took advantage of them, like this one back here. Well, not with him though. <laughs> also, there's a Statue of Liberty in here. In the. Okay, I, where are we? Oh, there's an Eiffel Tower. All the Lee Tower pizza. We're everywhere. I don't know. Something has gone wrong. <laughs> right back here is the city gallery. The building dates back to 1898 itself and used to house printing presses, so it has a bit of history. Ha! Huh. It also holds a bit of durian, which we still are perfect. It was free, it was an easy stop, there's some bathrooms tucked in the back and a little courtyard. It was kind of a fun little respite from the heat. The fan feels really good. So we are back to Independence Square, which is where we left off, and there's a lot more people here than there were when we left. There are 12 tour buses that are here with us now. There were zero here with us a few hours ago. Uh, it's about 3.30 in the afternoon, so I guess this place gets really hopping after lunch. The fountain that you can see behind me honors Queen Victoria and has been here since, you guessed it, the British colonial period. So the fountain is over 100 years old. Normally X marks the spot, here zero marks the spot. Zero point of city. All the addresses in Kuala Lumpur start here and span outwards. So far we've been covering some of the sites off of the square that are maybe a little bit lesser known. So let's hit one of the biggies and I'm talking about the most incredible brick building that you can see behind me. It used to be named something else but was renamed in honor of the Sultan who was Sultan when construction began on this building. Over five million bricks were used in the construction of it, which I guess is not that hard to believe because the building is massive. I love all of the archways. It reminds me of some Moorish architecture that we've seen in Southern Spain. And I don't know what the copper domes remind me of, but they're beautiful. Given its dominance of the square, I would say it's the Sultan of the Square. at the Sultan of the Square is the sporting club, or at least it was for a couple years. It then turned into a general social club and they wiled away the hours, days, even months playing cricket. The first cricket game was between married and single men. The married men won by a wide margin. <laughs> this square 
mainly has a British influence, and that really surprises me. The Brits would feel right at home with the half-timbered <laughs> buildings and social club. They really would. <laughs> now we are headed to something that I don't think we've done before in our travels in Southeast Asia, and that is going to an Anglican church? No, I don't think we've done that before. Three hours later and we're still burping durian. <laughs> when does it end? <laughs> All right, we are here at St. Mary's Church. Now this is the oldest Anglican church in all of Southeast Asia, right here in Kuala Lumpur. And what's really cool about this crossroads of different people and cultures in Kuala Lumpur is just as we arrived here, I can hear the call of prayer off in the distance. I think that's really neat. The church dates from the late 1800s and the gardens outside are beautiful, so I'm really curious to take a look inside. Was really cool. I think that that is the first time that we have gone to a church here in Southeast Asia and understood what was going on, where we recognize the symbols, whether it's the crosses or the baptism font or even the pulpit where services are delivered from. It is kind of nice to get that little feeling of home while we're here. So I thought it was a really cool stop. I'm glad that we did it. But now we're gonna head to a religion that we are not familiar with, but trying to learn more about. beautiful mosque. You can hear the call to prayer going on behind me. But unfortunately, their visiting hours closed an hour and 15 minutes ago. It is stunning from the outside. I'm really bummed that we can't go in. We have the right clothes with. But it is what it is. I could find the visiting hours anywhere online. We're going to put the current visiting hours down in the description. So if you're watching this, you're coming to Kuala Lumpur, don't make the mistake that we did. It looks absolutely beautiful. Why can't I stop burping durian? Still the durian? Really? Still? We've got to do something about this durian flavor. So we are going to take the metro a few stops to Kampong Baru, Baru, uh, which we understand to be sort of a traditional Malay area. And that's what we're in search of for today's video. So hopefully we can find something good. We're told it's authentic. This neighborhood was recommended to us by a local who we spoke with earlier in the day, and we were looking for some authentic Malay dishes. And this is where she said to come. It looks amazing. Check out this gate behind me. This neighborhood is one of the oldest neighborhoods in all of Kuala Lumpur. Let's go see where the longest line is and find out what they're all eating. We have made our choice for dinner. This place by far has the most people who are eating at it and some people who seem to be waiting outside. And we looked them up online and they're known for their nasi lemak, which we've not had yet. So I think this is it. Also, if we're still hungry afterwards, there's always more durian. It's three hours later and we're still burping durian. Still the durian? I'm just kidding. We will try actual durian, but we need to like give it a few days, not today. <laughs> there is a steady stream of cars coming in. It is a very popular neighborhood for dinner. This place is so popular, they need their own traffic control. All right, we went through the line and it went really fast. You pretty much just pointed at things and we don't really know what we got. We ordered nasi lemak, which is a rice that's made with, I think, 
maybe coconut milk. We haven't had it yet, but it looks like white rice. So I'm really curious to see how it's different. So I got a chicken that they said was a little bit sweet and Bill with the chicken rendang. There's also a healthy amount of sambal on our plate. So that's gonna be exciting. <laughs> so let's give the rice a try. Oh, it actually smells coconutty. Oh, I'm really surprised, okay. <laughs> You know how when you see something and you're like, oh, I know what that tastes like because I've had it probably literally a million times in my life. This white rice is not that. <laughs> I am shocked by how good and how different this tastes. It does not taste at all like regular white rice. It absolutely tastes like a fragrant coconut rice. <laughs> I am shocked, this is amazing. That is coconutty in all the right ways. I. I'm gonna eat this like every day that we're here in Malaysia. It's amazing. Oh my God. I'm always nervous about red sauces because red to me equals spicy. They said this was sweet. I hope they didn't mean sweet and spicy. Mmm. It is sweet and slightly spicy, but I kind of expect that. Wait, it's coming on still. <laughs> no, we're okay, I've got this. It's, it's every time I swallow. <laughs> So it is spicy. I don't really know how to describe the red sauce on this chicken. The chicken itself is very tender and just sort of falls off the bone. It's really good, but I don't know what the flavors are of the red sauce. Like I wanna say it's a barbecue because that's the only thing I know to describe it in my American English words, but it's not quite barbecue. It is it is indeed a bit sweet. It's definitely spicier than I'm used to. <laughs> this is not an act. <laughs> Every time I swallow it, it hits me differently. It is a little bit spicy. That's just because I'm a wimp, <laughs> not because it's actually spicy. It's delicious though, and it goes really well with the rice. We also got a potato and the rendang chicken, which Bill's going to try. And I'm just gonna sit here and eat a piece of cucumber because I have to. I also tried Heather's chicken and it's, I would give it a solid medium, but it does come on real slow and it picks up toward the end, so. That's a, that's a fun dish. So we've got two things left to try here. We've got what looks like a fried russet potato or a baked potato and then the chicken rundang. Hey Bill, why don't you try the potato with the sambal sauce? I think that's a great idea. I'll try that. I haven't tried a lot of sambals, usually just with skewers that we've had. Here it is on the potato. Mm. So my sense is that's a little bit spicier than Heather's chicken, but it might be the same sauce, I'm not entirely sure. The potato itself is very soft compared to how we would normally have things in the U.S., which is really interesting, and it's, it's got a good flavor. Yeah, it's great. The sambal is where it's at, though. And then we've got chicken rundang. Ooh, there, ooh, that spice comes on slow. <laughs> Excuse me a moment. All right, chicken rundang. Mmm. All right, that's excellent. So I got a chicken thigh, and the chicken is just super soft. I can't tell you how soft and, and delicious the chicken is in just a very lightly spicy sambal or curry type sauce on the top. It's not that spicy. So Heather, actually, you got the wrong dish. All right, that was amazing. Now we're headed to the Petronas Towers, which, I thought I had seen off in the distance, but now we can't see them from where we are. We have not seen them up close yet. I'm really excited to see them, and I understand that there's a light show, so that's what we're trying to get there in time for, the light and music show that is on the hour at eight, nine, and 10. That is where we're headed now, with very full bellies. That was so good. Bill pretty much licked the plate clean. I'm sure I don't know what you're talking about. bridge in all of Kuala Lumpur, for sure. I think it's really pretty and it has a great view, so I get it. But we are just trying to hurry our way to the towers, <laughs> weaving our way through the people.
they are gorgeous all lit up at night they sort of look like they're made of lace which is impossible well they're lace. very majestic in any case i love that they're not square or rectangular they are just absolutely stunning we made it here just in time for the light show which was two songs not very long but still amazing yep. This was fantastic. a great first day in Kuala Lumpur. And if you want to see more of our adventures in Malaysia, be sure to subscribe. We're coming back in about another week with lots more. We have so much more to come. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.